An unexpected opponent or problem in attempting to deal with the problem of climate change is that many uh, devout Christians think that, why should we bother? The end times are coming. Screw the world. <laughs> now, that sounds ridiculous, but there's actually some polling and some research to back it up. These are researchers at the University of Pittsburgh and also the University of Colorado have been working on this. Uh, and they believe that even once you take into account political ideology, religious identification, uh, media distrust, all of these different factors, the simple fact that, that, that these Christians believe in the end times and that they are a coming uh, leads them to not care about climate change. They think that it's, uh, the effect is about 20% of the opposition to climate change comes from that. And I believe what 76%. Really, yeah, yeah, it's high. Yeah, I could be misreading it. 76% of Republicans in 2006 uh, thought that uh, there was going to be a second coming. Yeah. Okay? So in their lifetime is usually a slightly smaller number, but a very significant number. Right. So three quarters of Republicans think, it, I mean, if you really believe it, if you really mm -hmm. believe that Jesus is going to return to earth, what, is, what difference does anything make? Right. So that's actually, it's a logical extension that like, oh, we're burning up the planet. Who yeah. cares? Jesus is coming. And he's either going to save the planet or kill us all or whatever happens there in right, Armageddon. But also, it could also dramatically affect how you live your life too, right? I mean, right. Like, like whatever, buy it, buy it, rack up the debt, doesn't yeah. matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's a lot of people think Jesus is coming like Use up all the a couple oil. of years from now. Use or up all the oil. Six months. Sure. And in fact, it's, it, there was a famous line from one of the Republicans saying like, God didn't put all this oil in there. Oh, the, that oil was the greatest gift we had gotten got from God. Because you poke the earth with a, a needle or something and oil comes out of it. Right. Yeah. And he's like, what a gift from God. Obviously, I take that gift and I use it up until yeah. Jesus returns. You, you drink our milkshake. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have a quote, by the way, uh, just to show you that this isn't just the, the, the run-of-the-mill voting Republicans, but also uh, people in government. This is uh, Representative John Shimkus back in 2010 said, The earth will end only when God declares it to be over. He yeah. is the chairman of the subcommittee on environment and the economy. Makes so sense. here's a guy charged with protecting our environment in some sense, saying, what effing difference does it make what happens in our environment? Because God decides when the earth ends. If it's 76%, if that number's high, I'm going to say it's high. Let's say it's 66%. I'm going to say it's two-thirds. It means one-third of Republicans don't believe this. Mm -hmm. One-third of Republicans, some version, one-fifth of Republicans, can recognize that when you vote for your, that representative, and I believe me, I don't think the Democrats are a frickin' savior here. But when you send that guy to Congress, this is what you're doing. You're putting a guy, head of the Environment Subcommittee, and you're putting that guy in charge of it. That's the danger. That's why you have to bite the bullet and vote for the Democrat. Because at the very least, the guy who was running the environment, who's going to be head of that committee, is going to be concerned about the scientific issues of the day. Yeah. He's going to. So and 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 it and it happens again and again and again. And when we hear, you know, when we hear guys like, uh, you know, who's our when we hear guys like Jim Inhofe, uh, mm -hmm. open his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you can't have guys who are professionally cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Like, yeah. that's what they do. Can't they go around, they're like, cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> they're looking for Cocoa Puffs like 24-7 yeah. as the head of your committees on science, the do, environment, so technology, etc. Don't you et think guys like Dick Cheney that that's why he became a Republican? Because Dick Cheney is so smart that mm -hmm. he's like, well, I can control these people. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting. And he found one to control for eight years. Right. Yeah, yeah, six years to be fair. Uh, the last two, Bush was like, oh. I think Dick might have been present the last six uh, years. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, so, so here we see the intersection between science and religion, and it can be very frustrating as a secular person to think that us, us who believe in science and facts and logic have to go up against this, and only once we fight, maybe we get some science out of it. It's very frustrating, and I found an image on the internet that perfectly summed up how ridiculous these conflicts can be, and it was a series of different images, and the first one shows Earth. And then they zoom out, the next one shows the solar system. Then they zoom out, it's our portion of the Milky Way galaxy. One more zoom, the whole Milky Way galaxy, our region of galaxies. They go three or four more zooms, the entire known universe, where Earth is just the tiniest little fragment. And Jesus has his arms around it, and he's saying, don't masturbate. <laughs> That's how fucking <laughs> stupid this conflict is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what he cares about. That's awesome.